everybody, welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today we're bringing you the first part in our Game of Thrones, the board game instructional series. In this video, we will cover the setup and some key concepts, and then we'll move on from there. The second part will be all about uh, the main gameplay mechanics with the exception of combat. Part three will be combat, and then part four will cover all the additional rules that we haven't covered yet. Before we get into the table, I do wanna mention our sponsor, Stone Valley Games. You can find them at stonevalleygames.com or go over to Facebook and search for Stone Valley Hobby. They should be the top result that pops up there. Stone Valley Games is run by a married couple, Eric and Wendy. Eric is a 25 plus year veteran of the US Army and has been a gamer basically that entire time. They still support the military and their families and contractors. Anybody that has an AE, AA, or AP address gets free shipping from Stone Valley Games. So that's a fantastic deal. They're always running. That's not just a limited time thing. That is company policy. And the Stone Valley Games has a solo focus. They, they focus on solo capable games, but also have all the new hotness, tons of old classics. There is a ton of stuff over there. If you're into Magic the Gathering, they've got a bunch of that going on over there as well. So be sure to check out Stone Valley Games. And with they, they also have uh, very competitive pricing, but they have a loyalty system as well for returning customers. So that's fantastic. Be sure to check them out. Stone Valley Games wants to be your friendly, distant game store. Go over to stonevalleygames.com and check them out right now. All right, so now let's get down to the table and I'm gonna teach you Game of Thrones, the second edition. There are some adjustments required when playing with fewer than six players, including certain houses that may not be used. I'll be setting up for a three player game, but if you're playing a three, four, or five player game, be sure to read these short instructions on page 28 of the rulebook prior to setting up the game. For a three player game, that means that house Tyrell, Martell, and Greyjoy cannot be used in the game. For a three player game, there are 14 neutral force tokens. You can see there's the number three in the bottom corner of these indicating their fourth three player game. Some of them are for larger player counts. And so you wanna make sure that the correct player count is face up when placing these out. For instance, King's Landing goes here on King's Landing. The goal of a Game of Thrones is to hold the most areas containing either a castle or a stronghold at the end of the 10th round. Alternatively, if any player controls seven such areas, they immediately win the game. Shuffle the Wildling deck and place it in the space at the top of the board. Then place the Wildling threat token in the two space of the Wildlings track. Separate the Westeros decks into their Roman numerals, shuffle them, and then place them next to the board. As I mentioned earlier, place the neutral force tokens according to the player range out on the board. All neutral force tokens will be used in a three player game, but with higher player counts, some of them will not. Any unused neutral force tokens can be returned to the box. Place the game round tracker on position one of the round track. Each player now determines which house they want to play in the game or the houses can be assigned randomly. Each player gathers all materials belonging to their house. One player screen, seven house cards, 15 order tokens, one supply token, three influence tokens, one victory point token, one garrison token, and all plastic units of their color. Players do not take any house specific power tokens yet. It's also important to note that players are limited by the number of components included in the game. If a player is using all components of a particular type, they may not bring additional components of that type into play. Each player references this section of their player screen to finish their house specific setup. The victory track can have more than one player share a single position. The same is true for the supply track. However, on the three influence tracks, Iron Throne, fiefdoms, and king's court, only one player may be in any one position. The positions you see right now are what's listed on the player screen for each house. However, when playing with fewer than six players, all influence tokens are slid to the left to fill any empty spots. This means that in a three-player game, positions four, five, and six on each track will always remain empty. 
the house in position one of each influence track now claims the pictured dominance token, which means House Baratheon has the Iron Throne, House Stark has the sword, and House Lannister has the crow. Each player should also have their starting units on the board according to their player screen. Each player places their garrison token in their home area. The power tokens for all houses involved in the game are placed into a central pile, and this pile is referred to as the power pool. Each player then takes five power tokens for their house to begin the game. And that's the setup. Now let's discuss some important terms before we get into the gameplay rules. A unit is a plastic footman, knight, ship, or siege engine. Other component types such as garrisons, neutral tokens, or influence tokens are not units. An area is a region of Westeros divided by a white border or a red border. The white borders depict land areas and the red borders depict sea areas. A home area depicts the shield of the house. This will be Dragonstone for House Baratheon, Lannisport for House Lannister, Highgarden for House Tyrell, Sunspear for House Martell, Pike for House Greyjoy, and Winterfell for House Stark. Turn order is determined by the house's position on the Iron Throne track. In the game rules, if you see the word house or the word player, these are used interchangeably. The words enemy or opponent describe any game component or area controlled by another player or describes the rival player themselves. Correspondingly, friend and friendly describes game components on the game board belonging to the same player. An army is defined as two or more friendly units sharing the same area. This can be a land area or a sea area. A single unit in an area is not considered an army. A player's available power is the power tokens in their play area available to be bid or otherwise spent during gameplay. Power tokens in the power pool are not considered available power. Anytime a player is instructed to receive or collect power, a player takes the indicated number of power tokens bearing their house from the communal power pool. When instructed to discard power, the player takes the power tokens from their available power and returns them to the power pool. A player may only ever collect, receive, or discard power tokens bearing their own house insignia. A unit that is destroyed during the game is removed from the game board and returned to the player's available units in their play area. And the phrase embattled area refers to an area in which combat is currently taking place. And that's everything you need to know to set up a Game of Thrones, the board game. Be sure to come back to check out the next part in our Game of Thrones, the board game series, where we'll cover the basics. We'll also have part three to cover combat. And then part four, we'll wrap it up with some additional rules. Also coming up in the near future, we have an instructional video for Tiny Epic Dungeons. We've got one coming for Waste Nights, and we're scripting one right now for Dungeon Universalis. So be sure to come back and check all that out. And until next time, if you're bored online, bored offline.